Hello everyone. Today I would like to talk about Git by Set, one of Git's awesome tools that allows you to quickly find a faulty commit when one was introduced. Now, as some of you may know, I've published a book called Getting Things Done. I have it here. Almost everything there is covered in this channel, but not everything. So I wanted to rectify that and start covering the things that are described in the book, but not here. So we'll begin today with Git by Set. So this is the scenario. I have a bug. I created a small repository. It calculates pi, more or less. Well, an approximate of pi. And for some reason, it used to work. The code used to work, but it's for some reason, it now showed 3.57, which is not correct. So what are we going to do? Basically, if we look at the Git history, we'll see lots of commits. And our goal will be to find the commit that introduced the bug. The first commit that introduced the bug. And sometimes it could feel and be daunting. I mean, you could have 10,000 commit in your history, but using it by set, you could find the right commit in a max of 13 steps. And to actually understand that, we'll get hands on. So I'll share my screen. I'll show you how I clone an exercise repository I created for this. You can clone it with me. Feel free to run the command alongside me. Let's get going. Okay, so this is the repository we're going to use. It's found at github.com slash omerer slash bisect dash exercise. I also provided a link for it in the description. So I'm going to clone it first. Okay, so we'll start by using git clone, provide this URL, and I'll change the this exercise repository. And here you can see it doesn't have much. It has a readme, a license, and get by. And if I use Python, get by, it returned 3.57, which is, well, not great. Um, what happens if we look at the last commit? Let's see. Let's look at the commit author. Whoa, lots of commits here from the messages. I can see that have around 500 commits. Um, I relied on another repository to create my own repository. You see here the, the original author. It's also mentioned in my repository's readme. So I'm using this repository according to its license. So I wonder where this bug was introduced. Was it even a bug that was introduced? Did it ever work? Let's see. Maybe I can look at the first commit that was introduced. So to look at the first commit here, I will use git log one line and I would use tail minus n1. That is, give me the last line all. So I see a commit named commit number one. Let's check out this commit. So I'll use git checkout 0950. Okay. And now what can I use get pi? I get 3.14, which is correct. Okay, so somewhere between main and the first commit, the bug was introduced somewhere in there. Now, I don't want to just start working from this commit because I introduced all kinds of changes since then. I want to work on top of that. So if I check out back to main, I use CO as a, an alias. So if I go back to main now, what would be the easiest way to actually find the faulty commit? So to explain how this works, I'll start by showing how I use the git by sect command. So to use git by sect, you use git by set start. Actually, I want to start with a good commit, the one that I know that was good. So let's do git co yeah. checkout minus, which basically undoes the git checkout operation. Nice trick if you didn't know it. And I use git by set. And I'll use git by set start and git by set. Good. Basically, this says the current head, the commit I'm on, is the good commit. That is in this version, when I run Python get pi, I get the right result. Optionally, we could provide a revision number or a name of a branch or a tag to this command. So for example, if I use git by sec bad, so I want to mark a commit where the answer is not what I want. So it's a bad commit. I can say, okay, main, which points to the latest commit in this case, which we know gets the wrong result is bad. Once I hit enter, so let's see what git bisect does. 
basically it says, okay, we have a range of commits. We're starting with commit number one somewhere here. So we have commit one and we have main. Between these two, we have around 500 commits. Somewhere in the middle, we have commit 252, which is exactly actually the middle commit between commit one and main. And the logic says, well, now check if this commit is also bad or good. If the result is okay, it's good, which means the faulty commit was introduced somewhere between commit 252 and commit that main points to somewhere here, and we can discard all of the commits here and vice versa. So let's see what the actual state is. If I get back to the repository here and I use Python, get pi, see? No, it is still bad. So commit 252 is actually a bad commit. Let's mark it like that. So no main is bad and we know 252 is also bad, which means actually all of this range are bad commits, and we can focus on the lower half of commit one to 252. So now back to creep of here, I can use git by sec bad. So I'm telling git that the current commit, commit 252 is a bad commit. And now git by sec goes to the middle between one to 252, that is commit 126. And you see that there are still 125 revisions to test after this which roughly gets to seven steps. So we have basically at most seven more times of doing that to find a faulty commit. So now we are at commit 126. 126. And we're going to check it. Again, get by. Oh, this is a good commit, 314. Good, so we got the commit. So given that this commit is good, just like commit one, it means that the faulty commit is somewhere in the range between 126 and 252. All of the range of commit one, two, three, and all the way to 126 inclusive are commits where the bug wasn't introduced. Everything here is okay. So we can mark it by sec. Good. This commit is good. And now we get to the middle between 126 and 252 which is commit 189. We're here, commit 189. And again, what we're trying to do here is to split the current range we're testing, 126 to 252 exclusive. We're checking which half of this range is the relevant half to test. So let's see again. Why? So this is a bad commit. Even that this is a bad commit, let's mark it as bad. So again, all of this range inclusive is bad. So the first commit was introduced after commit 126, and maybe it was 189, or maybe it was before 189, but after 126. So let's mark this commit as bad. And now we'll get again to the middle between 126 and 188. So now we're at commit 157. Let's check. Still a bad commit. Which means this whole range is bad. So now we need to look within 126 and 157. So to get us some more room here, let's draw a zoom in of that in the top left corner, this whiteboard. So I'm zooming in, let's have commit 126 at the bottom and commit 157 at the top. This one is a bad, 126 is good. All right, then we need to see what's happening in between. So here we'll mark the bad. And we got to commit 141 again, which is the middle between 126 and 157. It's 
still bad, which means all of the range between 141 and 157 inclusive or bad commits. When all of this is bad, we marked it as bad with Git. So Git gives me now commit 133 to test. Let's mark it as C instead of writing commit 133. Check. It is good. All right. Which means all of this range is good. So now we're somewhere between 133 and 141, which is really cool. We only have seven revisions to test and we started from 500 and see how quickly we were able to narrow down this range using binary search, that is halving the range of commits to check each time. Okay, continuing here, well marked is good. Now we're testing 137. Bad. So all of this is bad. Now we're checking 135. Good. 135 is good. Which means either 136 or 137 would be the faulty commit. So let's continue. We'll mark it as good. So this is 136. Let's see if it's good. It means that 137 is the faulty one. If it's bad, it means that 136 is the faulty one. Let's see. And this is good. Great. So we know the problematic commit is this commit right here is the first bad commit three, two, six, F and so on with the commit message commit number 137. We can see what happened with this commit with git show three, two, six, F, six, eight. And indeed it changed something with the numbers here, which causes the result to be off. All right. So this is the faulty commit. Cool. So to recap, what we do here is to let Git do this process for us of halving the range of commits, starting from an initial bad commit, which was the main commit right here, and a good commit, which was commit number one, each time taking the middle between them, asking us whether it's good or bad. We check, we let Git know if it's a good or a bad one, and Git keeps up with this process. Now, this case was relatively easy to test. I mean, I just ran Python 3 get pi dot pi every time and I got the result. Sometimes it's trickier and Git allows us to automate this by creating code that tests it, each revision and then the entire process can be done automatically. For example, in this case, so this is not a programming tutorial. I'll just write the code and quickly explain it. Okay, so basically what it did here is a process that runs Python 3 get pi, looks at the result. If the result is 3.14 or, re or really close mathematically to 3.14, it exits with the return value of zero, which means success. If not, it would get to the let statement here exiting with a value of one. Now I have this as a script, test.py. I could do something else. So I used git bisect reset to reset the bisect process. And then I used clear to clear up the CLI so we have more room. And now what I'm going to do is restart the bisect process. So git bisect start. And just as we did before, I'm going to mark this commit I'm now on, which is commit one as a good commit. And then mark the commit that main is pointing to as a bad commit. And now get started the bisect process, but this time, instead of running manually the Python 3 get pi script and then marking whether a commit was good or bad, gonna let script 
do it. So I will use git by saying run Python 3 test.py. As you can see, it did the process for us. So it ran Python 3 test.py, got a result, kept doing that until it found the faulty commit automatically for us. Honestly, for this specific case, I would probably just do it manually as we did before, even though writing this script doesn't take much time. In more uh, complex cases, it's usually useful to create some code that does that for you. I hope this video taught you something new about Git by Sec, or at least encouraged you to use this awesome tool more often. If you have any questions, comments, or requests for future videos, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you, and I'll see you all soon on the next video.